Today's a good day for Hector, other than the fact that he's promised not to faint during the broadcast. It's been raining all day, too. So yeah, yeah, but, but mostly it's because, you know, it's one of your favorite topics. Today mm -hmm. we're going to show you 15, 16 different ways to feed your Facebook. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we're not going to talk about just 15. We're going to do 16. We're going to do 17. But actually, after I, finish, a few more? after I finish publishing it, I said, you know, there's another way. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to get into that, Somebody too. Somebody make him stop. Okay. Yeah. Before we get into all that good stuff, well, I want to give you the contact information. So you can call us at 213-943-3808. That's 213-943-3808. Of course, you can also go to workingtheweb1.com. There you'll find links to Blogger, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, YouTube, Pinterest, and Instagram. And today we're not going to be streaming live on YouTube because they've got some new stuff going on. Because you couldn't figure out how to do it. Yeah, there's a little technical, you know, yeah. anytime they've got something that works good, they got to change it with yeah. a monkey wrench. Like I said, the programmer's mantra is <laughs> if it ain't broke, break right, it. Break it, right. So, and of course we want to say thank you to Vibrant Life Health Center, who's been our sponsor all year. Also have their own show now. Yeah, they have their own show. It's on Thursdays at, I think, is it 2 o'clock? Something like that. I'm not, I'm not, I remember the exact time, but again... If you go to Vibrant Life Health Center, there'll be links to the, to the site and all stuff. Um, go to their blog. Their blog has great articles, and they're often attached to the show, yep. so that would be a good place. And they also have some specials going there for their Nutramost uh, weight loss plan, which I highly recommend for anybody who's thinking about wanting to lose 10 to 40 pounds. They're the people to go to. Um, so Facebook, you know, I've been around a long time, and... People get out there and try and use it, and, and they don't grow, and they don't really understand why. And I often hear people say something like, well, I'm not making any money with Facebook. That's the first question they ask. Right, and then, and then you'll say, well, how many people do you have following right. you on Facebook? Right, and, and again, the, the <laughs> audience, not many. it's like if you want to have an ad on a TV station, yeah. you got to have an audience or right. nobody's going to buy from the ad. Well, same thing with the social nets. Social nets is, you know, followers, audience, pretty much yeah. all the same kind of thing. And if you're not thinking audience... You know, you're, you're really sort of putting the cart before the horse. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the real issue. So the first thing I always tell people, look, if you're going to sell anything on social nets mm -hmm. of any kind, whether it's Facebook or otherwise, you have to have an audience. Right. And if you don't have an audience, you've got to be able to stick your caboose on somebody else's audience. Right. I mean, that's really the way it works. So then the question is, well, how big audience? So what do you think is a big audience? Well, I mean, unless you've got thousands, I right. mean, you really don't you really don't have enough to you finish. Gotta, you got to you know? have a, like at least a thousand. Yeah. So thousands are probably the starting place. If you don't have a thousand, what do you do? I mean, you have twenty followers, fifty five, three hundred. So you're not what even do, close. Right. What do you do? Well, there's some things you can do, and I'll talk about them in the sixty nine. But one of the, the simplest things you can do is hook yourself to a company that actually markets to social nets because mm -hmm. they have their own following. Mm -hmm. So you can hook onto their caboose. Well, actually hook your caboose onto right, their train. Right, right. Pull you along. And we have a thing called Team Tech that we use that for where we have about 100,000 followers that and we social push out a message dunk. to. Right, social slam dunk. So it's not just Facebook. You could take your Facebook message and push it out on a bunch of other places. Sure. Another thing you could do is you can join groups in Facebook. Right. Now, there's some tricks that you got to be you know, aware of because if you're in Facebook and you just start trying to send everybody and their brother a message, you're probably going to get slapped down by either Facebook or by whoever the moderator of that group is. Mm -hmm. All groups, whether it's in Facebook, LinkedIn, whoever, have their own special rules. And you got to follow whatever the rules are. So, so how do you learn the rules? Because most you, people don't know even where to look for them. Where are the speed bumps? And, 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 well, the speed bumps in groups, you yeah. have to usually contact the moderator. And the moderator okay. will have a list of rules that you have to follow. Okay. And those rules are adept to change on a regular basis. Okay. It's like plus, everything else. Plus, Facebook changes the rules. And yeah. when Facebook changes the rules, then everybody else is scrambling to change their rules and so on. A couple other things about marketing on Facebook. You know, people like to post stuff on the timeline. So they'll post a coupon. I got this special this yeah. month. You know, and the reality is, even if you have a really great coupon where people should be clamoring to get it, Facebook filters the, the, the yeah, timeline. Yeah, so you don't even get to see that. You have to pay for that, don't you now? Well, no, well, no there's even another problem. Okay. Even if Facebook is not filtering your, yeah. because they may not. They might say, oh, yeah, it's a great coupon. Maybe we'll let it slide. People could be filtering your, your coupon. Right. Because in other words, when, when I put somebody, if I like somebody, I can say whether I want to see them in my timeline or not. So there's filtering stuff that's going on. So having said all that, how do you get found if you have no customers? Well, the only other option at that point, other than groups and stuff that we've just mentioned, is pay. You pay for your advertising. So what kind of advertising can you do? You can do boosted posts. That means a post that people like. You can make it be seen more. 
not only from your timeline but and your uh, followers timeline but other people's timeline it becomes like an ad okay okay you can put a banner ad a banner ads can have videos it can have pictures it can just have text if you want mm -hmm. uh, but pay-per-click is a pretty good way to go with Facebook in reality because right. it's relatively low cost. Mm -hmm. I mean, how much does it cost to do an ad in AdWords? A lot. A lot. So depending on your industry, like if you were in the, the legal beagle industry, right. it's like $30 a pop. Yeah. So one click, yeah. what do you about? And it's a click, not necessarily an Three action, clicks, right? $100. Yeah. <laughs> Facebook, it could be easily as low as a dollar and, and 2 to $3 is pretty typical. Especially if you're trying to be prime time and go yeah. to a lot of people and that kind of stuff. So that could be very cost effective if you're trying to get people to, to check you out. And on top of that, the ads are in the ad space. They're not in the timeline. So if somebody's uh, clicking on it, they want to look right. at your stuff. So that's a pretty good thing to, to think about. And that's one of the shortcuts. It's always been one of the shortcuts in the internet marketing right. is pay-per-click. But you got to understand if somebody if you if you do your ad to, to get them to like your page so now you can collect their information remember that these people are not loyal they didn't click on you mm. because they said oh this is the greatest people says white rice or something like that they clicked on you because you had something that it compelled them like you were giving away a coupon or whatever right yeah this week's special um, so pay-per-click is a good way to go but so say you want to still grow organic because you know that organic is more than twice as good yeah as pay. Mm -hmm. So how do you do this? So we got 16 items and we're going to go to item number one. So if you're on Facebook, you need to post useful stuff right. regularly. Not just ads. Yeah, not just ads. As a matter of fact, you More should only post oil. maybe one ad every 20 posts or something like that. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be put, put, posting a lot of ads. Right. So what's a good curated post? A good curated post, a curation in case you didn't know what that means. It, it means you say something about the post. Like a curator in a museum. The right. curator says, this is uh, the Mesozoic era, right. you know, or whatever <laughs> they're talking about. It. So you have a good post. You say, this is my grandmother's favorite cookie recipe. Or whatever it is that you're posting, you just say something nice about the post. And hopefully you're saying a good headline so the people will click on your post to so, read so it. So where do you find stuff to curate? You find it all over the place. I mean, here's a great way to find stuff. Mm -hmm. If you have a topic that you like to post about, say it's your uh, cookie cooking, it's a right. cooking show, and you're right. a cooking guy or whatever, you could just type in Google uh, alerts and say articles on cooking about cookies. Say that three times. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and it'll bring you articles. Now you can also do something simple like type in a search about cookies. Mm -hmm. Okay, or go to YouTube and say videos right. about cooking or whatever. Right. So, uh, so you can find the information on, I mean, again, do we have the internet today? If you can't find something, right. something's wrong with you. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but you can find the curated stuff, and then you just have to keep it down to about 400 words. Right. But I would tell you that whether it's Facebook, Twitter, whoever, mm -hmm. less is more. Mm -hmm. And generally, around 100 words is the ideal curation size. Okay, keep it short. Yeah, keep it short. Don't make it too long. Make it pithy. Uh, and post these things at least once a day or so, minimum. Mm -hmm. um, if you're really posting wonderful, really cool stuff, you can post multiple times a day. Okay, two, three times a day even. So you have more cookie recipes. Yeah, more cookie <laughs> recipes. So, on top of that, if if you really want to get play, right, you have to have authoritative posts. Right, which are ones so that you create. So, so what's that? The ones like that a, you author. Like a blog. Right, an art, a blog, an article, stuff that you've created. And those authoritative posts are not saying that these people are cool, and, you're, and you shouldn't actually say, I'm cool, read my post. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. You should say, read my post, tell me what you think. You know. And if people really like your post, they're going to share it, like it, comment on it. And that really gives you not only Facebook juice, it gives you Google juice. Right. Unless you're named Trump right. or something. Then, then, you you'll, then you'll get any juice. juice at all, you got to be Hillary. As a matter of fact, you got to be... Trump dressed like him, and then you'll get some, <laughs> some Facebook juice on it. You tried that, but you didn't look at all good at dress. <laughs> um, so posting authoritative stuff uh -huh. is really the cat's meow, and that's on any social net. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, it, that's a great way to prove your expertise. Uh, it's a great way to have people start sharing your stuff and commenting on your stuff. Right. And not only, you'll get Google juice out of it on top of that, because mm -hmm. the stuff that's posted on Facebook and all these other social yep. nets, Usually, ranking. usually gets to Google in some mm -hmm. way, shape, or form. 
So number three in my list of 16, and I'll add a 17th at the end of the show, is invite people. Right. Yeah. You know, one of the things that people don't do on Facebook is they don't invite people to, to, to like them. I, yes, I understand it's a grueling process, and you got to sit there <laughs> and do like George Jetson. Right. Okay. But that's the game. For those and, people who know who George Jetson yeah. is. <laughs> sorry if you don't know who George Jetson is. Sorry, George. Okay. Uh, but think about it. I mean, if you don't invite people every day, yeah. how, how, how are you going to get people to follow you? Yeah. I mean, it's not an automatic thing that people aren't just out there looking for somebody who said, oh, yeah, they got cookie recipes. Right. That's not the way it works. I mean, they might see you in their timeline because somebody else shared you, right. but that's going to be far and few in between, especially if you have 115 people following you. Mm -hmm. Okay? So here's a simple formula. And I've used this for Twitter, and I've used it with every social net. If you go out and invite 10 people a day to like you on Facebook, one may follow you. But if you do that every day for a year, right. you get 365 new followers. If four people do it, follow you every day, you now have over a thousand. And Good now number. you hit the thousand number. Right, now you're, okay? in the, now you're in the game. And you could probably get away with, in Facebook, 20 to 30 invitations if you're really mm -hmm. aggressive. All um, right. Worst case scenario, the first time you go over Facebook's limits, they'll slap you down a little bit and say stop. You know, because, <laughs> you know, you, you might think of it as spamming people. But again, you could get probably, you could probably make 30 invitations with not too much trouble. 25, 30 invitations. And again, if you follow that rule where 4 and 10 might say okay. Mm -hmm. And what's really weird, I mean, in Facebook, you'll get weird people that you never heard of wanting to right. connect with you. I mean, yeah. I get them from all over the world all the time. And I'm like, no, no. No. I mean, I don't understand why somebody in, in Korea wants to follow. Okay? Right. Can't even read my stuff. Um, so that's number three. Can you use uh, email, right? You Use email is a really big thing. Again, if you haven't gone out and asked people to follow you via email, mm -hmm. I mean, how hard is that to do mm -hmm. that? I mean, that's a very simple thing to do. Sure. Uh, snail mail can also be used. Yeah. I mean, most people don't think about doing it, but I'll, for example, I use send out cards. In my send out cards, it'll, at the end of it, it'll say, like me on Facebook, you know, check me out on Twitter and so right. on. Yeah, well, you and I too, we do a lot of networking, and yeah. a lot of times after I come back from a networking meeting, yeah. that's the first thing I'll do. You know, that's yeah. my follow-up, is hey, like me on Facebook. Yeah, I mean, how, if the TV stations and the radio stations and yeah. the magazines are doing it, you ought to be doing it. I mean, that's right. a simple, simple thing there. So those are two. One is emailing, and the other one is snail mail. Mm -hmm. Snail mail works very good, believe it or not, especially if you put a QR code right. on the snail mail where they can take their smartphone yeah. and, point and click point and click on it. The same thing is true if you're in if if you have a store. Yeah. You want to have signs in the store that are QR codes that yeah. they can use a little bit. Right, phone. just don't put the QR code all the way down the right, right. bottom it's of the door. Be, it's gotta be a face <laughs> level. I mean it, you know. You're always gonna get down on their knees to, to try to get that QR yeah, code. You never, it never seems to amaze me. I go in there's a bank right in our building here. And they had a QR code down yeah. at the bottom of the like the door. The bend yeah. over and go do. You know, so those kinds of things Q it's like, I, well, I'm doing my push-ups down there. I can right. take the picture of you. If you give people the opportunity to connect with you. Well, if you make it easy. For them, and, right? Yeah, if you make it easy, they'll, they'll connect with you. Here's something that, that makes a big difference. Anytime somebody connects with you, yeah. thank them. Okay. And that's on any social net. So yeah. if, if they follow you on Twitter, mm -hmm. say thank you. I really appreciate it. Hey, <laughs> by the way, go connect with me on, on Facebook. So when you're using all these other social nets, and most people mo don't just use one. Most right. people use one or two. And again, you should have your Facebook profile listed everywhere. Mm -hmm. So if you have a landing page, if right. you have a website, mm -hmm. if you have a blog, mm -hmm. and you don't have it asking people to connect with you on Facebook, why would they not? Why right. would they connect with you on Facebook? When you send an email to somebody, at the end of the email, it ought to have a little list saying, hey, connect with us on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Okay? Those are simple things that people should need to do. Um, I would tell you that if you have a customer database, do a mailing with a coupon or whatever and say, hey, if you connect with us on Facebook, you get an extra coupon. Right. If you're giving them incentive sure. to do it, yeah. the likelihood of this will go we've, through the roof. We've done the same thing with uh, people to put, get people to post reviews, you right. know, your customers. Right. Give them an incentive to, to, to do something. want to do something, yeah. okay? Um, 
Here's another one that's actually relatively easy to do. I mean, a lot of people have like, you know, AOL or Gmail or Hotmail and so on. There's a, a function inside Facebook that you could go into called Find Friends. Mm -hmm. And when you click on that Find Friends, it'll upload, it'll let you select a database, okay. like, like your Gmail, mm -hmm. to upload and then it'll invite them. All right. How cool so is that? So if you've got a big database like I do, it'll yeah. invite the whole database. Um, to find that, if you go to the article and read it, it gives you the exact instructions, but it's up in the upper right-hand corner, and you click on it, it's a drop-down box, and it'll say Find Friends and so on. So read the article. It'll give you the information on how to do that. Um, ask your best customers to invite their friends to Folly. That's good So if idea. you have really good customers, then they might have four or 500 people that they're connected with. Mm -hmm. If they just connect you to 10 or 12, yeah. that could be a big deal in the long run. And in many cases... They're also giving testimonials about you at the same time. So another item in the same vein, if you will, is get people to give testimonials. Because when people see testimonials about you on Facebook reviews, in mm -hmm. essence, or in the timeline, right. the likelihood of somebody clicking to follow you is much higher. Okay. And not only that, you can sort of you can sponsor those things and make them sit at the top of the page. Right. You can you could boost them as posts and all those kinds of things. And if so, all else fails, buy your way into the damn right, right. That's right. You can always <laughs> do pay-per-click. And that's actually one of my items. That's not, item number 11 is pay-per-click promotions. You can do pay-per-click to get people to like your page. And again, when they like your page, you're now connected to them. So you have access mm -hmm. to them. You can send them emails and, or messages, I should say. Um, use promotional directories. So a promotional directory might be like Clout or Communit or... Pinterest or Instagram or tweens where you can uh, in there you say hey check us out on Facebook okay and people who are searching these directories are right. usually looking for people that are like-minded mm -hmm. like industry and so mm -hmm. on and they're gonna follow people within their industry so that's another way of getting to people that that can get you more stuff um, I talked about doing pay-per-click in Facebook mm -hmm. but a lot of people don't think about doing pay-per-click in other social networks. so you can do pay-per-click in LinkedIn Right. You could do pay-per-click in Twitter. Right. You could do AdWords in Google+. Plus. Right. And you could ask people in those arenas to like you on Facebook. There are a lot of companies that actually don't have websites. Right. They have a lot of, sm especially small companies, they just have a Facebook page. Yeah. Well, if your Facebook page is your website, you can use these pay-per-click mediums to get people to go and like your page or, or to buy off of your page. Because right. you can sell on Facebook directly. Mm -hmm. It's just like a blog. You can set it up. Sure for those kinds of things. Whatever it takes, right? Yeah, whatever it takes. Um, I mentioned this at the beginning of the show, and that's joining groups. So you can join a group, and there's lots of different groups. I mean, just about any group you can think of. Just type in groups in Facebook, it'll bring up groups. Um, when you join a group, you follow the rules of the group, but one of the neat things, if you have 100 followers and the group has 10,000 followers, mm -hmm. you now have 10,000 people you're connected to. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. Now, again, you can't break the rules because if you break the rules, they'll kick you out right. real quick. <laughs> okay, <laughs> So just follow the rules and you'll, you'll do well. Um, and again, it's a, a quick way to get connected to just a whole bunch of people. Okay. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line there. Um, I'm coming up on the last couple of mine here. So if you're running advertisements in other medium, mm -hmm. so what's other mediums? You run an ad in on TV. Okay. At the end of the ad, tell people to connect with you on Facebook. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> or at least have a little graphic come up. Yeah. On the edge I mean, the it. TV stations are doing right. it. again. If the TV stations are doing it, you ought to be doing it. Right. Okay. If the radio stations are doing it, at, right. at the end of your radio ad, say, "Don't forget to, you know, like us on Facebook and so on." I mean, those are simple things to do, and they can make a big difference for you. Um, well, my last one before we start getting to the world of weirds and stuff like that is where is it? Uh, leverage your posts. So, you know, it's a lot of work doing all this posting mm -hmm. and following and stuff like that. There are aggregation programs out there. Some of them are combination aggregation and directories like Communit is an, is an aggregation program and a directory program. Uh, Hootsuite is both. So you can communicate with people and you can also follow and unlike and all those other types of things. But these aggregation programs often allow you to post to multiple social nets simultaneously. Right. They allow you to find everybody in one place so you don't have to have five windows open and all those kinds <laughs> of things. 
and that can save you a lot of time. Oh yeah, most it's of busy. them. Most of them also let you post things into the future, so you right. can schedule your posts, and that means you can set up. It's Tuesday at eleven o'clock. I can do work for an hour, and I'm done with my social for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. So you can schedule your work, and that's really a big deal because again, if your store opens at nine and you come in at eight and do your social work from eight to nine, right. that can save you a lot of work and those kinds of things. Now, at, when I was getting to the end of my, my postings uh, I mean, in the article, I'm thinking to myself, what else haven't what I thought else, of? What else haven't yeah. thought of? And I'm writing an article. Right. So I think, you know, I can promote the article on right. the blog. Right. I can promote the article in any e-zine that I sure. put it in. That's another place. So any publishing platform you can think of that right. you can publish stuff in, you could promote Facebook page. Mm -hmm. So for example, LinkedIn has Pulse, that's their blogging yep. platform. Blogger has Blogger, there's WordPress. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Facebook has its own thing called uh, Instant News. So they have their own little blogging platform, if you want to call it that. But anything that you publish to can be a platform that you can then press people to come and join your social net, whichever one it is. So, that so in means, other words, there's a lot of ways to get found out there. Well, think about right. YouTube. If you go on YouTube, right. You can then say, go check us out on Facebook. Right. I mean, most people say go to my landing page or whatever, but again, there's no reason why you can't. If you're trying to grow your Facebook page, you could do a three or four month campaign where everything is focused on sending people to your Facebook page. And if you do that, you'll get a lot out of it. I would tell you, if you want more detail, go to the blog. On the blog itself, there's about a half dozen, I think it's seven or eight articles that I talk about how to use Facebook. Mm -hmm. For example, we didn't talk much about using a contest right. to get likes. That's another way of getting more likes on, on your Facebook page. Yeah, like but, I said, you gotta be creative. The yeah. more creative you are, the better it's gonna work, and, and yeah. you can test and measure just like any other marketing. And media. again, one thing that's nice about Facebook, it has the insights that are built in. Right. It's got the promoting tools all built in. It's like, Facebook is like their own little built-in universe. I mean, right. It's like yeah. a sub... Yeah, uh, uh, and before before we get off this subject, let me, let me put on an 18th, okay? Because this isn't so much building your Facebook or feeding your Facebook, it's getting Facebook to feed you. Right. Because and this is what I tell a lot of people because we've had we've had a couple of round and rounds with some clients on this. The bottom line is, advertising is like fishing, and ultimately it's the fish to decide what bait they want to nibble on. And okay. if you put out a, some type of a promotion out there and it doesn't get any traction, don't blame the medium. Right. It's not the medium's fault. It's usually it's the it's offer. It's, as a matter of fact, that exact same story. I, I yeah. know if you remember, I wrote an article how to get fish to jump in the boat. A yeah. social media analogy. Yeah. And that was because one of the clients came to me and said, "You know, I got." I got 1,800 people on Facebook and I ain't sold somebody one pie. And I'm like, so what's your point? And he looks at me like I'm crazy. I said, you got this big fishing pie. Right. You got all the fish in it. Right. And you're not going to take any bait. And you tried one piece of bait and they didn't bite it. Right. And then you're saying there's and, no and, fish. And now you're saying there's no fish. <laughs> Change the bait. Right, exactly. Because <laughs> ultimately, it's the fish that decide what they what they want to nibble on. It might it might not even, it might be using the wrong rod, or right. you're, you're fishing at the, the wrong time of day, or whatever. Bait. You know, if, if worms don't work, right. try squid. I'm try try <laughs> a lure, a nice shiny one. <laughs> right. You know. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's the deal on on Facebook. These same techniques will work on for the most part on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. Twitter, yep. Instagram, and so on. And which Facebook owns Instagram, so a lot of those. You know, as a matter of fact, I see a lot of people using things like Facebook and Twitter and, and so on to say, oh, check me out on Instagram or check right. me out on Snapchat or whatever. Right. So these things work almost universally across the board. Yeah. All the and and the thing, too, is that once you do, if you do come up with a good offer, don't just put it on just one medium. Right. Put it on everything. Put it on your landing pages. Right. Put it on your home page. Yeah. Put it in your newsletters. Our Facebook rewards program yeah. is really, really good at that because most, most of the Facebook programs are all Facebook. Right. But this Facebook rewards program that we use, you can use it on Twitter, Facebook, blog, newsletter, right. e-newsletter. Yeah, and you set it up and, and you can put it anywhere. You yeah. can even you, you can, can even literally put, put QR code and put, put it on QR table code tents on, on, top paper, of the, right. on top of your tables or on your counter before you, with a checkout. Play right. areas in, in your in your business, and it's not just coupons. You can also run contests. You can right. run customer rewards programs. It automates the whole thing. It's got these really cool scratch off games yeah. that you could do. It's pretty cool. It's like if you want to get into the worldwide weird. Yeah, so we're at the worldwide weird time. We're about six minutes into the end of the show here. We got about five minutes five and change minutes. left. Yep. And and okay, there's a couple of them here I wanted you to talk about. You know, we've been talking about drones, and you've heard of armed drones, right? Right. Well, this is a little different. This, this one has literally arms. yes. This is a drone with arms. <laughs> 
<laughs> this looks pretty scary. Yeah, <laughs> it does. It's got this thing going <laughs> ratchet. But, you know, think about it. You know, pretty soon they're talking about delivering pizzas and packages and everything else. So you're going to have to have things like that, well, right? Somebody just got approved for delivering stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think it was one of the taco places or yeah. something. I don't know if you heard that on the radio. No. But but I, they I, got I they got approved that. to do some experimental taco delivery or something. Taco drop. So this is probably one of them that's going to do it, right? And then of course you got to hand the thing your money. Here you go. Yeah. Do you make change? I don't know if I handed it. That thing was pretty. Yeah, I know. It looks like you wouldn't want to. You get too close to it, the propellers will get you. Right. Yeah. They're like open. There's no there's, yeah, there's no, no blade no, guards yeah. or anything. No, not at all. But but this is even better because you know we, we were talking about when we were doing the thing on the bots and you had like right. the cheetah and the big right. dog and everything. Right. Well, there's there's a few new ones that uh, Boston Dynamics has come out with. My favorite one is called the Sand Flea. It's like the it's, Rollomatic or something. It's a jumping robot. What's cool if they actually have a little thing, it does roll. Okay, but then what it'll do is like let's say you come up to an obstacle like a wall. What it'll do is it'll kind of lever itself back. I mean, it jumps high. It'll jump on top of a ten foot. I was I can Holy do what smoke. this thing does, <laughs> and then it starts rolling again, right? Oh, look at <laughs> it's a 10 foot jump. Oh, easy. 12 yeah. foot jump. Boink, and it clears like, it with yeah, room to It's spare. like an 18 foot jump. It's like a freaking flea. <laughs> you know, it really is why they call it the sand flea. But it's, it's I guess, because again, it looks like a, one of the big Roombas. Yeah, because it's it, just big. Yeah, yeah, and the thing is, is what's, what's strange about it is it's not, it doesn't fly. But it sails because it just it'll jump. Well, like I said, it'll jump. Originally, it, Superman didn't fly either. Yeah, I mean, he just could leap tall yeah, buildings. Well, that's what own. this is doing. This is leaping tall buildings over walls. I mean, they have they have a really cool thing. So I mean, why don't they call it like Superbot? Yeah, so, well, they call it the the, the sand flea because I guess that's what it's modeled off. Because, you can see it, because it kinda, a flea it, can jump like ten this, times its height. And it's jumping on top of because of, debris piles and all kinds of I stuff. Could, I could see that that would be a good thing to use with a, you put a bomb on it. Well, but they're probably the using it for a lot of his rescue because you know especially when you have like these earthquakes and floods and things and the, and the buildings are, are collapsing. Yeah. I mean, this thing weighs almost nothing. It's t it's small, so that's what's good about it. Now, spot, talking about flying, remember we had the flying cat, the guy that did the cat drone. Yeah. Well, here's something that you'll love because it's it's called Fly. the Flying Dog Competition. They have this every year in Karnak. Uh, Slovenia. Karnak. I thought Karnak was like in Egypt. No, well, I'm sorry. Kam Kamnik, okay. Slovenia. Okay. So close, close. Enough. Kamnik, Slovenia. But, but literally, they have a three. It's a three day competition where they basically entice these dogs to jump off of these big slides, and they they measure how far the dog jumps. I mean, it figures. So it's like an Slovenia. inflatable slide, I'm assuming, or something. Well, actually, it's something. It's almost like a ramp or something. It's like a platform, and they throw you throw like a, a chew toy, and the dog just goes flying off this thing, and then they, wow. they figure out how far it flies. It's actually something they have in Slovenia every year. But, well, and then the ones that don't make it, they cook them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We still think it would go good on a bun with some some yeah. on it. But anyway, if you want to see something even stranger, you've heard of dances with wolves. Yeah. Or here's a guy that's dancing with workers. <laughs> this is a guy, a kayaker. Notice he was. This is guy's kind of like. He's kind of stupid. Yeah. Well, he had and he, and he flew helping this thing from. I guess one of these drones that follows him around. Yeah. But he was paddling on his kayak, and all of a sudden he noticed this pot of orcas. So what does the guy do? He jumps in the water. And this one orca came up and started playing with him. You know, and he would like turn the thing would turn with him and turn but he's like, ah, and like, he's like his head's yeah, gone. But, uh, like, just tasting it, I was like, mm, I wonder how this would taste. <laughs> he's not quite a I seal, but if I get real hungry, I'll, he still like he's hanging around. I think I'll call you lunch. Right. <laughs> you know. And, and then there was another story I thought was really kind of cool because they actually had these orcas that were they were that they had raised in captivity with dolphins, and you know what the orca started doing? Talking dolphin. There you go. Well, they're the same. Uh, Genus or whatever you call yeah, it. Yeah, but they're totally different. You know, it's like you all of a sudden you start talking Chinese because you have to be in the same restaurant right. as somebody speaks Chinese. I mean, it's pretty cool the way they could do that. But they actually started to talk because the, the, the guys yeah. were noticing that they weren't talking because the orcas have different right. types. Right, they got like a clicky guy. The, well, actually, it's the dolphins that do the clicks. The, the the orcas don't make the same noises, but they were they were imitating them. So that's pretty cool. I mean, right. I've seen my I've seen my parakeet imitate things, but I've never seen a you well, know. Well, just goes to show you that you know these animals are probably a little smarter. Yeah. Than, than we think they are. So next week, if you want to know what we're going to be up to, we're going to be talking about the right stuff, blogging for business. We're going to be talking about how you can use blogging as a tactical marketing weapon. Ten seconds. Yeah. Kind of pick up where Hector left off this week. And we also want to make sure that you uh, go to the blog. Uh, go to the notes page. You can find lots of stuff there. If yeah. you're in Club WQ, look in the Dropbox. You'll be getting that stuff. Um, also, make sure you check out VibrantLifeHealthCenter.com um, and go to their blog and check out their show on Thursdays. I mean, if you go to Blog Talk and then type in 
uh, Life and Balance. They'll come up. Uh, other than that, I mean... Uh, That's it. Keep working the web to win, gang. See you next week. Have fun on Facebook.